Thanks for tuning in to Fairgrounds Live, Immersive Conversations. In this weekly interview series, we chat with Fairgrounds collaborators, collaborators and give you an insider's look at Fairgrounds St. Pete. For those of you who are new to Fairgrounds, we're a soon to open immersive art and technology destination. I'm Liz Dimmitt, our CEO and one of our co-founders. And today I have the pleasure of turning the tables on Olivia Mansion. She's usually sitting in this chair and ask her some questions about what it's like to work at Fairgrounds and to learn more about what she does. So I'm gonna read your bio because it's pretty impressive. Olivia directs and manages marketing, social media, and communications with artists and the community. She works on telling the story and mission of Fairgrounds, St. Pete, as well as communicating and articulating their goals to artists. She is a higher education professional, entrepreneur, and co-founder of OK Transmit, an art and technology group in South St. Pete, Florida. She has worked and consulted with a range of nonprofits and for-profit organizations to develop operations and communications, STEAM and entrepreneurial educational programming. She's passionate about entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship, and the wellness industry. When she isn't working on fairgrounds or her consultancy, you can find her meditating, running, or doing yoga. Olivia has a master's in entrepreneurship from the University of Tampa and a master's in education, English linguistics, and cross-cultural studies from Brown University. Olivia was born in Venezuela and calls South St. Pete home. Well, that is a lot, very impressive. So without further ado, Olivia, what is it like to be on the other side or sitting in the other chair? Well, first of all, that was a beautiful intro. You did wonderfully. <laughs> I'm nervous, this is my first time. No, you did so mm -hmm. good, you did so good. Being on this, it's definitely way more nerve wracking than I expected, but I feel truly honored that I'm being interviewed by you. So oh, I'm just so totally excited to be here. So you are not from St. Pete. How did you end up here? Yeah, so I was born in Venezuela and my parents immigrated to the United States when I was really young. And I went to middle and high school in upstate New York. And then um, I absolutely love Florida. I'm one of those people that like loves living in Florida. Mm -hmm. um, and then after high school, I just knew I had to make my way down here. I went to college here in Florida. And then shortly after graduating, I moved up to Rhode Island where I went to grad school and then spent almost 10 years in Rhode Island where that's where I went to Brown and had some really great experiences. And then um, my husband and I knew that we had to come back to South St. Pete to do something exciting. We didn't know what that was, but we knew that it was gonna be here. Um, after being gone for 10 years, we would travel and visit back over the, the winter breaks and it would just we would see more art and more art and more exciting things happen and we were like, okay, we have to be here. So then we moved down here and you know the rest is history. I've had the same experience. I spent many years living and working in New York City and over sort of the last five I was there, coming down to St. Pete and Pinellas and Tampa Bay, it just got cooler and cooler. There was more and more things to do, and I really felt that draw all of a sudden. Okay, so you mentioned your husband, and your husband is Mikhail Manchin, our CTO, and one of the co-founders of Fairgrounds. What is it like to work at a startup with your spouse? Okay, so I'm gonna say something, and I hope people believe me that I actually really love it. I <laughs> love working with Mikhail. He is, um, if you've had the pleasure of meeting him, he is absolutely intelligent, fun, smart, and he has, he's one of those rare people that have like the creative side and the engineering side. And um, he's also a great listener and asks great questions. So I'm always like bouncing ideas off of him and just getting his feedback and just like, just asking like, what do you think about this? Or what do you think about that? And um, he's also very honest. So I know that he'll be very honest with me. Uh, and we also work in very like different departments. So he's in tech and I'm in communications and artist relations. And then um, there's days where we spend all day together working, collaborating, and then there's days that I don't see him at all. And then we have to, at the end of the day, go, how was your day? What did you do today? So I absolutely love it. Do you have to set up aside time, like we're not talking about fairgrounds at home? Because if not, you'd be sort of like having breakfast, you know, talking about it at dinner time. You know? That's such, yes, a thousand percent, yes. Okay, so if we don't get a chance to catch up on our day at work, we will, so we also share a vehicle, so I will share that, share that. So on our drive home, we always catch up about fairgrounds, and that's like a time where we can like just 
he can talk about what's going on and I can too, and then we get home. Um, I think the second we get home, it's like no fairgrounds. <laughs> unless <laughs> it is like, yeah, unless it's like an emergency or mm -hmm. something really big, we'll talk about fairgrounds, but otherwise, there'll be days where it's like, oh yeah, I forgot to tell you that big important thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, because like just that work-life balance, I'm like so, so big into the wellness industry and mindset, and I wanna bring like my best self every day, and I can't just like live in fairgrounds all day, every day. <laughs> I find myself getting home, and my husband will ask, well, you know, like, how was your day? How was fairgrounds? And I'm like that, you know, kid for, that tells their parents, fine, what did you do? Nothing happened. Because it's just like, you know, you're so in and on all day long, really in it, and then I sort of get home, and I'm like, no one. <laughs> exactly, I don't want to, yeah. it's so cool, but I can't talk about it anymore. So let's go back in history. I first met Mikhail through John Collins of the St. Pete Art Alliance two years ago, and he and I connected on the phone and got along right away and just sort of talked about all the same things. And then we met in person, and Mikhail brought you, we met over coffee. What did you think when we met, and sort of what did you walk away with from that meeting? Okay, so like, I think the whole story is just really epic because it's such a South St. Pete story. Like, we met a bandit for coffee on Central, <laughs> like, it's just the whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, but well, I think from the get-go, you were always so collaborative, and I mean, that's just who you are now that I've gotten to know you. And you basically laid out like the plans of like the warehouse of the factory, and you were like, this is what, I, this is what I'm working on, and then you shared your vision for Fairgrounds. And like, I was so blown away, Mikhail was so blown away, and um, your husband Piers was there, who I just absolutely adore, and mm -hmm. um, just the conversation was so like, eye-opening and exciting, and like, just this, these people, we were like, you're from New York, and you wanna do this cool thing, and we wanna do this cool thing, um, and a lot of what, like Mikhail had done in the past, like, this is what you were trying to do. So we were like, just felt so much alignment. Um, and then I left just feeling like, I need to like work with this woman. I need to get to know her. She is so cool. Um, you were wearing like animal print. Your hair was like just so amazing, just like it is tonight. And I was like, I need to get to know her because she is so cool. Well, I, I had my husband Piers at it and I had been telling him about Fairgrounds and my idea, uh, you know, that, you know, this immersive arts race that I was doing. And I, you know, been telling him that this is what I was doing for a while. And I remember we got into the car and drove home and he said, oh, now I think you can do it. Like now that you've met that, now that I've met those two, I think it can happen. And I was like, good to know that you didn't think it was just me. But <laughs> the truth was, I thought the same thing. I thought, okay, now it can happen. Like there's, you know, other smart people that want to do this with me and want to help me because I knew it wasn't for me to do alone. Mm -hmm. And shout out to Piers for being such a supportive spouse <laughs> yeah. and just and very honest and believing well. in your friends. <laughs> so one of our, from there we went on in one of our first significant fairgrounds events, and I'm not even sure we used the name fairgrounds then, was, I'm going to read it, a concept development, se development session mm -hmm. that you and Mikhail led. Mm -hmm. And we had a bunch of key stakeholders there. Tell us a little about the process and what came out of that meeting. Okay, so that is super fun. So if you visit our blog, fairgrounds.art, you'll actually get to see some images of that workshop. Mm -hmm. um, documenting the process of making a fairgrounds has been important since day zero, because that was literally day zero. <laughs> um, so you can actually see images of that. But so the concept development workshop, um, I'll kind of break it out. So Mikhail has a background in design and like just has a very impressive background in like um, in helping develop uh, programming and projects like this. And I have a background in entrepreneurship education. And oftentimes in order to create a big project or a company, you wanna ideate and you wanna put all of your ideas, doesn't matter good, bad, you don't judge ideas, you just put them on a wall. So we gathered all of these stakeholders around the table. And so just imagine stacks and stacks, like hundreds of post-it notes, Sharpies, stickers, and we walked everybody through this brainstorming session with all of these really fun prompts of Florida lore and uh, uh -huh. flora and fauna and culture and what does Florida mean to you and, and what are the perceptions of Florida and Florida man and all of these things. And it was just putting them on the walls and it was just like, at the end of the day, we had hundreds and hundreds of post-it notes. Um, and that's basically where Fairgrounds started. It started through ideating what could this narrative be. And from the get-go, it's always been about storytelling. And that was a big part of it. It was like, it all starts with the story and kind of taking Fairgrounds from that process onward. And there's actually parts of, um, most of Fairgrounds actually came from that workshop. I remember at the workshop, we came up with a new verb, which was sinkholing. So if you fall down a sinkhole, you are sinkholing. And it was just sort of all those funny things about Florida that you all sort of bring up. And it's true, some of the narratives we 
discussed that day or came out from different people are what Fairgrounds is based on today. So you mentioned Fairgrounds is really story driven. How does the narrative shape the experience? Yeah, well for us, story and narrative is everything. I think us as humans, we connect with stories, we connect with each other through stories. So for us, even from the beginning, it was about creating this narrative that people could either see themselves in or could participate in um, or could understand uh, what, you know, like the Florida experience through it. And um, for us, it was all about celebrating weird, wacky, wonderful Florida. You being from New York, me living in New York a long time, there's perceptions of Florida. Mm -hmm. um, and we kind of wanted to break that stigma and we knew that the way to do it was through story. Um, and then we, through with the artist's work, we then kind of tied their artwork with this narrative. So fast forward a year from then, this was in 2019, and then back in 2020, the pandemic happened and we sort of rushed to put out our artist's call early. Why was it important to, for us to get it out at that time? Mm -hmm. It was so huge. I think we started seeing how a lot of events were being canceled and theater, you know, like just so much was being canceled and being shut down. And we thought there's artists in their homes wanting opportunities. Um, and we also thought, well, we're moving forward. We're, we're gonna create this immersive experience. There's artists that are talented. Um, we need to push it out. And I think it was the first moment where it, where we pivoted as a company because even early on, we, we thought we'll do artist visits and we'll see artists in person studio visits, and we'll do yeah. studio visits uh -huh. and we'll visit them and we'll drive and we'll have dinners and events with the artists. And our vision for the call for artists in January and February was very different to the execution mm -hmm. of the artist call, but it was, I think as a technology company, it helped us pivot and go, this is an online world. We're a technology company. Let's figure out this technology now through this open call. Um, and even now, like, you know, when I get to talk to our artists, they say one of the most special things about the pandemic was the fact that we had this open call during a time where they were like, could I even still be an artist? Can I still make my art? Like, what's going to happen next year? And we were like, no, we're moving forward. Here's a wild narrative. Play into <laughs> it. Um, and just, you know, so I think that was just very uplifting. So walk us through that process. Um, I mean, we had a sort of loose narrative and we sort of shared it with artists, but we didn't want to be prescriptive. So how did that come about? Like, how did we strike the right mix there? Yeah, oh my gosh. And that's something that, so and Liz and I, it was the four of us, right? So Liz <laughs> and I worked very closely in the beginning, uh -huh. like from day one. So it was like literally her and I, and we quarantined together. Uh -huh. um, so we've been together since yeah. March, like, yep. you know, since February, 2020. Um, but so we put out a request for qualifications. We wanted to, we put up this call. We said, we're looking for artists, send in your qualifications. And then artists submitted through our online portal, which was all self, all created. Our mm -hmm. chief technology officer created a portal where you could create an account, submit all your artwork. Um, and then from there, our artists were then moved, they moved on to a request for proposal. And then in the request for proposal, that is where we um, gave them, like you're saying, a narrative. So mm -hmm. we created a deck, we did a webinar, and we shared with artists the different, what we call anchor spaces at Fairgrounds. Um, and an article just came out today in the Tampa Bay Times, which is very exciting. So you'll see some of those anchor spaces there. So very early on last year, we shared those anchor spaces with artists. And we said, these are the different spaces. This is our narrative, Weird, Wacky, Wonderful Florida. We asked them to please not share with anyone because we wanted to keep it under wraps. They did a great job. They're doing a great job. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. <laughs> um, because we, you know, we don't want to spoil the surprise. And then artists then played into the narrative by contributing their artworks into it. So, you know, Zulu's Mermaid that you saw in the yeah. article was there, Matthew Campbell's Pool. Um, and so artists then submitted this work. And I think something I learned from you, Liz, was, you know, we weren't looking for good art. We were looking for art that was playing into the narrative and playing into mm -hmm. this immersive experience. Yeah, I mean, I think that's something that's important for our audience and our artists to know. Like, we're not in the business of judging art, and that's not what we were doing. We were just prioritizing the art that made the most sense for phase one of Fairgrounds. And that was a really interesting process because, you know, we didn't quite know what we were doing the whole time. I mean, not that we know everything that we're doing now, but we sort of had to make it up as we went along. And I think you and I had to work on how to tell that narrative and share that narrative and we're still sort of working on it. One thing that I think is interesting, you mentioned that Fairgrounds is a tech company several times and I don't think that a lot of people 
get that and we're still honing our narrative about how we tell that. So we describe a little bit about Fairgrounds as an art and technology company. What does that mean? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, even from the beginning, like one of the key hires for Fairgrounds was, you know, your like a co-founder is the chief creative technology officer. One of our first hired was a lead technologist. So I think from the get-go, it was always about how can we take stories and how can we take art to another level? Mm -hmm. um, in this area, we're really the first of its kind because there is no space that is incorporating technology in this way. Mm -hmm. And we view technology just as another medium. We view it just like a painter would look at paint. And we're looking at technology um, in a way that creatively and also very cost effectively because we have a limited budget. We do. <laughs> we can't, you know, buy the best of everything. We can't buy the most expensive of everything. And thankfully, our technologists are very creative and they're very resourceful. So thank you to our technologists. Um, um, because of that and then we also want to educate people on what's possible I think it's exciting that with a very small tiny computer that you can build in your home you can create something very cool um, that you would have just maybe seen in New York or seen in a big city mm -hmm. um, so for us I think it's always how can we make uh, technology accessible and I think also it, putting on my entrepreneurship hat any company nowadays is a technology company. I think we're now in this era where, you know, you either with an app or your website or reaching people, we're in a in a global market that every single company is a technology company. It's just a matter of how are you implementing technology in your work. So that's really well said and explained. And I think that something that's interesting about Fairgrounds is that we're teaching artists some technology and sort of expanding their practices. And going back to the narrative, when we got those submissions from artists some artists you know reflected the narrative that we had sort of told them and some artists took the narrative in an entirely different direction or wrote their own narrative or their extension of it and i think that's one of the most exciting things for me about fairgrounds is you know what's next you know we're sort of say we're bringing the canvas and the artists and our collaborators are bringing the paint paint and really bringing it alive but that process of what's next or how artists can continue to build on fairgrounds is just going to be so exciting. Mm -hmm. So the artist process, we went through this whole process. What have you learned? This was your first time working straight on with artists. Yes. Yes. What have you learned and how did it go? <laughs> I learned so many things. You know, it's funny, Liz. I think I think back to me last year and I'm like, who was that person? Like, <laughs> um, because I've just learned so much. And one, I will say, I learned so much from you and I feel so grateful that I'm one of the people, <laughs> yes, in the company that um, has worked alongside you. And every day I'm always thinking about your vision, Mikhail's vision and how everything that I do, make sure that it's aligned to that. But um, to your point of what have I learned, so much. I would say um, being able to give constructive criticism. I think that's a big one because no matter how good something is, there's always room for improvement and <laughs> there's always something good in it. So I think that being able to have a conversation with an artist and, and being able to deliver that feedback, um, not being afraid to have a difficult conversation. That's a hard one. That's a hard one. I've learned that from you and that's been um, just really helpful in my life just in general, just being able to have a conversation about um, something that and not like taking it personally I think has been very helpful um, being able to say no and that's a big one that is a really big one that uh, that is really coming handy and I think as entrepreneurs it's easy to want to do it all mm -hmm. and um, asking for help I think you know I think in the beginning it was like I was wearing all the hats and I was like willing to wear all the hats and as it turns out that's impossible <laughs> um, and we now have a team of just amazingly talented people that have um, the strengths that I don't have and then I can actually play to my strengths which is connecting deeply with these artists and being able to, to say no or not right now mm -hmm. um, and then helping bring their work to life so yeah, yeah. Um, that has been a really interesting process to watch you evolve in because I can remember in the beginning talking to artists was a new thing and I was reading a lot of your emails and we were talking about the conversations ahead of time and that was just like, go, go, go. I see you out on the cell phone talking or doing everything. And I'm just so uh, proud, but also just grateful because it's a very important job at Fairgrounds, you know, communicating with our artists and providing services to our artists. We really think about artists as our first customers. So can you talk a little bit about that and the importance of artists? Absolutely. And uh, that's so well said. But um, I take my job as, you know, leading the artist relations so seriously and 
when I'm with the artists, I'm always advocating for our team because our team is comprised of artists and entrepreneurs, which is super cool. Yeah. So I'm with when I'm talking to artists, I'm always thinking, how can um, I leverage our resources? How can I make sure I protect our time? How can I make sure that I'm being honest with what is happening? Can we execute this? Can we execute exactly? Yeah, like, is this possible? This? Uh -huh. And sometimes, the, and early on, there, it wasn't. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember being in like in a room with like my cell phone, and then you being on the call, and I'd be like, Liz, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. <laughs> um, but so have, being able to have those difficult conversations. But through all of that, building this relationship with the artists, I um, I care about each of them so deeply. I get to know them and their families. Mm -hmm. I get to know them, um, find out what's happening in their lives. I hold them accountable. Um, I also love um, entrepreneurship mindset, so I can tell when an artist is hiding. I can tell when they're self-sabotaging. Yeah. I can tell when they're having dramas in their life. So I can um, be very supportive for them as well and, mm -hmm. and advocate for them internally with the company and, and go, well, this artist is going through something. Can we buy them two more weeks? Or this artist needs this resource. What can we do? Um, and then all of that to say, because they are our first customer. Yeah. They, um, they're the people that are gonna bring people in. They're the ones that are gonna get the first look. They're mm -hmm. the ones who are, like you're saying, they're the ones that are filling the canvas with their art. And the people who challenge us from the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. Meeting the expectations of our artist and not the demands, I mean that in a nice way, that they you know, put on us because they wanted to execute these epic projects. All of a sudden we had to you know, do it. Um, one part of your job is really you really champion the artist to our team and explain what the artist is going for and make sure that we're sort of executing and keeping it on track. Um, has there been a particular artist or a particular project where you really had to work hard to do that or explain what we're going for? Maybe the pool. I remember the pool being, you know, just one that we really had to get our heads around. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's so many stories, mm -hmm. but yeah, so the pool. So one of our artists, absolutely talented artists, created this beautiful design. It's totally feasible of having a suspended pool, so elevated pool, um, but they wanted to use water. And <laughs> as a famously that I will live my entire life of being quoted as there will be no water at fairgrounds. Mm -hmm. um, and. As you can imagine, having fair, water at fairgrounds is very complicated. It's mm -hmm. I'm thinking long term, right? So like, what happens in a couple of years when our our managers have to fill the water? What happens if we have technology? What happens if the water evaporates? Like, yeah. there's just so many um, just unknowns. So being able to have that conversation with the artist multiple times uh, about you know there there can't be water at fairgrounds, and because they're so competent, capable, they're like, well, let me rework it and let me redesign it so that there could be water. Yeah. Um, the irony of it all is that there's now fire sprinklers connected to the pool, so actually the artist wins because no. there will be water uh, in their pool. <laughs> so another project we work with artists on is Florida Rama, and that has its own challenges and its own sort of constraints for artists. Will you tell us about Florida Rama? Yeah, so Florida Rama is also really special because it, in thinking about how can we incorporate more artists, mm -hmm. we thought how could, like, we will create this whole cohort and alumni of artists um, to create a con artwork within the constraints of a box. Um, and so when you walk into Florida there's gonna be over 25 dioramas made by artists. And that entire process was super interesting and in, in, in a challenge in communication also because uh, some of these artists have never made dioramas. Some mm -hmm. have, some had never heard what a diorama was. I remember that. <laughs> I remember <laughs> that. Um, and then showing them that there actually are dioramas that are like fine art dioramas. Mm -hmm. Some artists had never made work this small. Some had never made work so big. <laughs> some are used to working in miniature mm -hmm. and this was a lot of space. It's about a 20 inch by 16 inch box. Um, and so being able to have those conversations with artists, and they're a highly esteemed group of artists, they're incredibly talented and in ranging in all media, like these artists have, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and that, and also I think it's, Florida is special because they had to create a narrative to fit within the constraints of a box. Mm -hmm. So they were playing weird, wacky, wonderful Florida, but every single diorama has its own story and it's like its own container. Um, and yeah, and it's just, it's exciting. I think I'm gonna get emotional when I walk yeah. into Florida. You have a, you, I don't know if you can remember the quote, like tiny worlds, a universe of possibilities. Oh, which is really what it is. Mm -hmm. You know, it is um, really artists created entire worlds with their own stories. So 
you know, one diorama to go see would be enough. Like that would be an activity and it would be totally fun and interesting. They're just all so good. And then we have 20. Yeah, right now we have 23. 23 of them. And it really is Florida-rama, a play on the sort of kitschy side, side of the road sort of tourist traps. Um, and these dioramas are sort of all staged together. And I think it's just, it's just a really a part of fairgrounds that is near and dear to our heart. And I think a key sort of summation, one room that sort of says it all at once. Mm -hmm. oh, with, yeah, just, I just love Florida Mama so much. So our business model is unique in that we share a percentage of the profits from our ticket sales with the artists. Why is this important to us? Yeah, this is really huge for us. I think we view artists as, like, as entrepreneurs. We view them as um, just people that are building their careers. And for us, it was important to support artists long term while their art is on view. Mm -hmm. So we commissioned artists, so we paid them for the work that they're producing. And in addition to that, while their work is on view, they're getting a percentage of ticket sales. Um, this. And what I've noticed with many artists is that they're, they find it difficult to promote themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a great way to incentivize them promoting themselves, you know, come to Fairground St. Pete and come see my work. Um, we benefit and so do they. So I just think it's like a beautiful um, blend of everybody wins. And I, I mean, to this day, I still have not heard of any company doing something like this. I, I haven't either. And I think it's sort of the St. Pete model, right? Like St. Pete as a city and as a community, we sort of all benefit from having these greatest artists and technologists here. And I think as a company, we just really wanted to acknowledge that artists are the draw and they're the draw at fairgrounds. Artists and technologists are the draw and they should be compensated for the, you know, people are coming to see their work. So it's worth compensating them for. Yeah. All right, so let's switch hats a little bit. Yeah. You handle fairgrounds communications, which includes marketing, PR, and community relations. I participated in some of these efforts and it took us a while to get our pitch about fairgrounds down. Um, how do we explain it so that people really get it? So okay. what is fairgrounds? How do you describe it? Okay, so fairgrounds, I would say it's a choose your own adventure, immersive arts and technology destination where you are encouraged to explore and you're also becoming part of the narrative. and everyone is invited to come and be a part of it. Okay, so what is immersive? Mm -hmm. So immersive is art or ex an experience that engages multiple senses and oftentimes it takes the viewer and the person experiencing it into the design. Mm -hmm. So whether it's like uh, you create a space for them or it, they're activating it, um, it's always thinking of how is the user experience, like what is that like? Very, very cool. And another big part of your job is the community relations side. And we've had to really work hard on community relations. Why is that important to us? Yeah, it's so important. You know, like thinking back of the our name, like fairgrounds being a celebration of what's here, like the traditional fairgrounds, there is so many amazing organizations here locally. There's like just, the community here is rich in culture and in people. And for us, it's, you know, being able to go out into the community and share what we're doing, um, ask them how we can, you know, how we can be involved, um, and then, yeah, and just collaborate with with the existing community that's here. So that's a really big aspect of, of our job is also communicating with uh, what we're doing with who's here. So our neighbors, other arts organizations, other tech organizations, artists, guest visitors, all of the above. As we've been going through this process, we decided to have a community room. Will you sort of tell us what that is? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, the, I love the community room. So the community room is, so as you'll read in the Tampa Bay Times, um, part of the narrative is this roadside motel and this weird, wacky, wonderful world that we are creating. And um, there's many motel rooms, which are all artist takeovers, some fairgrounds takeovers. You won't know what to expect when you walk through one. But one of the motels is our community room. So it plays into the narrative, but it also allows us to collaborate with local organizations. We'll have um, temporary exhibits that allow us to kind of showcase what community organizations are here. And we'll start with Creative Clay, which is an arts organization dedicated to teaching artists of all abilities. And um, we had the pleasure of visiting a few weeks ago mm -hmm. and picking out some work. And uh, picking out incredible work. Mm -hmm. incredible. That was like the hardest thing. It was like, can we just do all of it? I know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a small room, but um, so that that's a really exciting way for us to also incorporate those artists who will bring their families and friends to, to see what, what yeah. the artwork is. 
So we think of fairgrounds as sort of a stage or a platform on which to promote lots of artists or, you know, hopefully we'll be a big draw and all of you and the public will come and see us and all the artists will come see us and visit fairgrounds. But, you know, why is it important for us to sort of get help share these artists' works and get, you know, help create a community where people come and enjoy them? Yeah, you know, we're we're getting people that are coming not only from St. Pete but from all over the country mm -hmm. and we're a big tourist destination and for us it's showcasing the best that's here. I think, you know, it's rare that you can go somewhere and see the best in show all year round, mm -hmm. but Fairground St. Pete will be a place where you can see local organizations and learn about local technologists and local artists and muralists and artists of all kinds all under one roof, which is pretty incredible. Yeah, I think that that's I think Mikhail and you have said it well too. We want also St. Pete to be a way, a place where artists, technologists, entrepreneurs think that you know know that they can have a career and really excel here. So the idea that hopefully we can just help get more eyes on things or inspire the next best great thing from an artist or technologist is just one of the things that makes me most excited. Um, let's see what else did I want to say public programs. So you are really the face of fairgrounds these days and doing these immersive conversations and interviewing our artists. Um, we're taking fairgrounds, not just, you don't have to just come visit fairgrounds on site, but there's things you can do to experience fairgrounds, like watching these. Why is that important for us to have programming? Yeah, and I will say, yes, I am the face, and yes, I somehow get thrown into <laughs> being in front of the camera, but we have an incredible team of just super talented people who um, who are experts in their field in education and in PR and in so many areas that I am not an expert in. So I will definitely just say that. Um, but in regards to, and so the question was program. So it was public, question? like why are we doing public oh, programming? Yes, here? exactly. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, we're live, <laughs> so here we go. Yeah. Um, public, pro so it's, so I think it literally goes back to the concept development workshop and storytelling. For us, we're in, in my role, we're sharing the, the story and the making of fairgrounds, and we want people viewing at home or viewing where you're viewing, uh, or those who are experiencing fairgrounds to feel like you're a part of what we're creating. Um, we're, we're community based, we're, you know, we're all about uh, Florida and celebrating what's here. And through sharing, we hope that, you know, when you come back, you can say, you know, like I saw them when, and I'm, I, you know, I'm a part of this. And I think that's, that's a very special part um, of, of my role of helping people feel like you're a part of this, like we can't do this without you. Um, I mean, I still remember when we had like 20 followers on Instagram. Oh, <laughs> I, I do too. I think they were all my family. <laughs> so all my family and our, everyone who works here is family. And that's yeah, it. yeah, exactly. So we're not just sharing our story and talking about fairgrounds all the time. A, what, a lot of what you do in the immersive conversations is talk to artists so we can learn more about their practice um, and, you know, give them a chance to share with the public because hopefully we have a big audience and you know, sharing their work is a big part of what we're trying to do. So we have also a souvenir shop at Fairgrounds, and we'll also be featuring artist-made goods and their art or merchandise in that shop. And that's another way, we talked a little bit about how we're sort of giving artists economic opportunities there and then teaching opportunities as well? Absolutely, yeah. So there's there's many avenues in which artists can be entrepreneurs at Fairgrounds, uh -huh. which makes me very excited. Um, we have artists that are creating exclusive merchandise for Fairgrounds, which is very exciting, that you will only be able to find at Fairgrounds St. Pete. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like artists will be able to sell their work and it's exciting for our guests because they can take a piece of Fairgrounds home, either a wearable art or a sculpture. Um, quite the range, which I, I'm so excited to mm -hmm. reveal, which we, you'll only be able to purchase if you come to Fairgrounds. Um, so we're providing opportunities there, and then all of our artists are experts in their different fields, in resin, in wearable art, you know, in technology, in painting, in sculpture, just across the board, and it's so exciting. So um, we're allowing them opportunities to teach as well, and do workshops, and to share with others their practice as well. So um, we're viewing it, you know, artists have many entry points at Fairgrounds, and uh, exhibiting their work is one of them, but there's, there's quite a few avenues. So if there's artists out there that are interested in participating at fairgrounds or worried that they missed the one call that we're ever going to have, how did they sort of learn more or learn about the next call? 
Yeah, absolutely. So we have our Insiders Club, which is super special to us. That is where we release like the most recent latest news first. So you were the first to find out. Uh, right now it's actually free to join the Fairgrounds Insiders Club. So visit fairgrounds.art. And um, there we're actually going to release like our future open calls. So you definitely want to like, you know, be on that list. We're also going to do some preview days before we open to the public days where you can come see fairgrounds first our insiders club will get to see it first and then hopefully give us some feedback because you know we didn't get it all right and we're gonna have to evolve and you know change things out i am sure so that'll be really fun so fun and so, so our artists um when we have calls the insiders club will hear about it first yep y'all will hear about it first so you definitely want to be on there um i get a lot of dms about how they, you can participate in fairgrounds so insiders club is always my answer <laughs> And so fairgrounds, we're really just on what we call phase one. Mm -hmm. And who knows how many phases will be, but the story doesn't, and the art and the technology doesn't stop here. We'll sort of be building on it all the time. Mm -hmm. So there's no missing the boat. You can always sort of learn about the next thing or participate in the next project. Exactly. And and just for context, we view our artists as part of a cohort. So we're not gonna individually, you know, like recruit artists. We're gonna do an, another open call and then those artists will be a part of a cohort. It's important for us, for artists to feel a part of a community that they can um, have this camaraderie with each other. So we have one cohort now, we have a Floridorama cohort, and then we'll have another open call where there'll be another cohort. Yeah, and then we also have all these collaborators. So. Fairgrounds isn't just these artists coming together. We have an incredible team and people that have worked with us to make it happen from sound to lighting to building our anchor spaces. And they're all part of that cohort as well. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll get to come when you come to see Fairgrounds, you're just going to be so super like our team is so talented. We have like you're saying, we just have such a range of skills that it's it's impressive every day to come and see these super professional people. I'm like, oh my gosh, the talent at Fairgrounds is off the chain. I think that's a great place to end and it is it is a joy to work with everyone we have at Fairgrounds on our team and with all of the artists and it will be a joy to share it with the public. So you usually sort of take everyone out and say all this important stuff at the end, which I did not write down. So will you sort of take us out tonight? I would be happy to. <laughs> Thank you, Liz, well, for interviewing me this evening. Thank you everyone for joining us on another immersive conversation. I now invite you to visit our fairground shop where you will be able to find some beautiful fairgrounds merchandise. We also have exclusive postcards that you won't be able to find anywhere else. Be sure to purchase one or five, send one to a friend. Um, mm -hmm. And then without further ado, we will see you next week for next week's immersive conversation. Mm -hmm.